Welcome to the Love Cars on the Grid podcast, your global motorsport roundup with me, Tiffany Dell and Paul Woodman. Welcome to Love Cars on the Grid, your global motorsport podcast roundup. It's an absolutely ram-packed weekend <laughs> motorsport. Who would have thought that in January? There's no <laughs> talk about from all over the world, uh, including, of course, Daytona, um, which really kicks off the, the whole season, I guess. But um, we're going to... The new era, the dawning of the new era of sports cars, a brilliant weekend in, uh, in, in America. Yeah, and not just America, Tiff. We've got Saudi Arabia, we've got Sweden, we've got New Zealand. We're going to start off with a little bit of FIA controversy. We're going to kick off... A with little bit, a little bit. <laughs> wow. Oh. You, you, tell, you tell the story. It's quite incredible, really. Um, well, it's all kicked off again, hasn't it? This is, you know, this the president, Mohammed bin Saleh. I mean, it's been growing over the year, really, because you know, he came into power, of course, straight after the Abu Dhabi fiasco. Um, and the first thing he did, I think he straight away wanted to show that, you know, he's in charge and rules are rules. But he fined Lewis Hamilton for not turning up at the prize giving, having just been robbed of a world championship. So that did go. That was his first move. And the whole year we've had this sort of, it's been building up and with the Andre- Andretti's wanted to join Formula One and uh, sort of, you know, lots of years. The FIA saying that um, Colton, Colton, Colton Herter couldn't have a super licence, you know, because he was putting the rules, perfect yeah, rules. Ridiculous, shame on you. So yeah, so he's like showing Liberty you can't. It's this big battle between FIA and Liberty, basically, Liberty Formula One. The Liberty, of course, are growing bigger and bigger and puffing up their shoulders and having more and more races and they're getting more and more money. And the FIA is still trying to sort of say, well, we're in charge, really. Don't forget, we're in charge. So this case came up. Apparently, Saudi, I don't know how true his rumours are, but they put in a bid to Liberty to buy Formula One. And apparently they'd offered 20 billion, which was rejected by Liberty. Well, I'm a bit worried, we might talk about that a bit later, that, you know, we live golf, I'm almost because this FIA Liberty thing goes any worse. They could walk away from the FIA. They could do a live golf. They could run their own rules, have their own deals, have their own track inspectors. It would be a massive move. But it's something that was talked about with the FISA FOCA with Bernie Eccleston way back in the, in the 80s, you know, that uh, a breakaway Formula One. Um, well, hang on, so, for those who don't know what Live Golf is, it was a uh, so you got the PGA Tour, yeah. which is sanctioned by the PGA Professional Golf Association, similar sort of thing. And uh, Saudi Arabia came in with billions, billions, of pounds, <laughs> billions and billions, billions to try and get the best golfers. And lots of them said, no, we're not going to do it. But then lots went. So people like Phil Mixon, Lee Westwood, they actually went and followed the money. Whereas Tiger yeah. and a few of the others said, no, I'm still not going to do it because uh, yeah. it doesn't quite sit well with us. So it's a similar sort of thing. Just yeah, they, they just run their own series. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, paying people 200 million to join the club. Yeah. So, anyway, so, so maybe the Saudi, it's the same people that put the money into Live Golf. Maybe they did come up with this 20 billion to buy from Liberty, which they turned down. The only trouble is then that Bin Salaam uh, called it an inflated price, almost ridiculed that, you know, it's not worth 20 billion, you know, trying to, which of course doesn't go down well with Liberty. It didn't go down very well at all, did it? Shareholders. So, when it's a company that was, uh, tried to feed its shareholders nice profits, so that's really upset them. They told Salem he shouldn't be saying he's out of his cost, he's proud, he shouldn't be things like that. But then worse for, for Salem is that then uh, someone's dug up on his a quote he made on his website. He talked about people he don't like, and, and one of the lists of things he didn't like was women thinking they're smarter than men. And he said quite rightly, you have to understand that you know women are not smarter than men. Full stop. That was, so, an, that was an old quote, wasn't it? That was dug I out. Know. I know. I don't like it sometimes when you see these sort of, <laughs> you know, sports stars making their cricket debut in the test match age 23 and someone digs out a tweet he made when he was 16 years old, which, you know, back then maybe wasn't quite as, as awful it is today. So it, I don't really like digging up old quotes for a different era, but such is the modern world. What you did in the past will come back to haunt you. So, yeah, it's all not going well. As I said, you know, I do worry that, you know, because this little clique of 10 teams, they got all this huge money, uh, more tracks in the Middle East, more tracks in America, the tracks that can't afford to pay Liberty £50 million to host a Grand Prix, you know, are getting pushed off the list, like France, maybe Spa, 
um, all the traditional tracks, you know, can't afford that sort of money. So it's a worrying time. I know we're joking a bit about uh, poor old Mohammed um, getting embarrassed, but it's it's a worry. Yeah, but you, you you're right. You know, if if the the uh, the spas of this world end up say end up with someone like um, um, Saudi Arabia saying we'll give you so much money to be able to have you on the on the on the circuit, um, they're going to say yes, aren't they? I mean, yeah, it's yeah. no brainer. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one. The heritage versus the heritage and history versus the money, 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 loads of money. But it's 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 a shame. It's the way our sport is going. Well, Formula One for sure. And um, anyway, there you go. Yeah, and that that's not the only news. There's a bit of other news um, in terms of the entertainment. Uh, certainly from the UK, Sky Sports are dropping two quite popular guys. Yeah, one yeah. Herbert, and Johnny Herbert. I, you know what? Big respect to Johnny. I quite liked him when he was a racing driver as well. But um, uh, I met him at Silverstone maybe 30 years, 25 years ago. But he he was the only one really that stood up and said, Lewis Hamilton has robbed, they should get yeah. the He was the only one. Yeah. He talks his mind and he's not allowed to. You're not allowed to say what you not think allowed to. straight up. No. If, you know, you've got to make sure you say what you think is, is you know tempered down to supporting the image of F1 and Sky and Liberty. But I get um, it. If you're getting paid 200 grand a year, 300 grand a year, whatever they get, yeah. um, I get it because why would you want to, Cut off the, the, the face. Absolutely, it's a golden goose. But Johnny, I love Johnny Herbert. Johnny, Herbert. I was the commentator on BBC Grandstand live when he won the Formula Ford Festival. Having started at the back of the grid in his heat and got to the middle of the grid in his quarterfinal wow. in front of the grid, um, and I've spoken to him many, many times. Of course, he had this horrendous accident that chopped his foot off and had to be stitched back on in a, a Formula Three thousand. Um, he was going to be a superstar, but he, he was so damaged. I mean, the, the pain of walking, I think to this day, he still has to take painkillers to keep walking. Um, the fact that he did his first Grand Prix in absolute agony and finished, I don't know, fourth or third, I think it didn't he? And um, so talented as racing. They won the more, of course, in, in, in the Mazda. So he still had some great successes racing, but he would have been, I think, one of the uh, an outstanding superstars. Um, Can I just say so, well, a little funny story about Johnny Herbert was. I went to Goodwood once and, and he was a Formula One driver for Benetton. And so he's a proper, the real deal. And I met this lovely elderly couple in a Volkswagen camper van, I think it was. And it was the Johnny Herbert fan club. And I just got talking to them. I said, oh, have you ever met Johnny? They said, he's our son. Oh, no. <laughs> Way. I was absolutely away. <laughs> this lovely couple, and I just thought, oh, maybe, maybe they're doing it because they just think they're the big fans. But it was, it was mum and dad. Brilliant. Absolutely. Uh, um, and also <laughs> Paul the wrestler, who Paul the wrestler never smiled. So maybe that's no. He's I'm got to do. His trouble with Paul is, is, is that he's got amazing information. Techno. He always has too much technology. He starts talking about oh. tire warming up in such a scientific manner. <laughs> But it's got that dour Scottish monotone, you know, which it, sometimes he goes on a bit. But I think, to be honest with him, I think his racing program is to the World Sports Guard Championship. I think maybe he's also said, well, I can't recommit. And I think as soon as you don't commit 100%, then you say, well, OK, then. I mean, I have got an awful lot of presenters. Uh, but Johnny's sad to go. I think, yes, because he sort of speaks his mind, maybe maybe he's too risky in modern day to have him up there. The other news, British, we've got Jensen Button going to Le Mans, which is quite exciting for a lot of Button fans. He's still one of our most popular British world champions. Absolutely lovely bloke. He's a good wood. You know, he's beginning to just try other things, which I love to see uh, former world champions do. Um, he's not, unfortunately, hit a front-running hypercar. I'd love to see him out in a potentially race-winning car. He's in this, they call it the Garage 56 entry, which is something Le Mans do every year with one car, the extra place on the grid for... Uh, the technology of the future. <laughs> it's a bit of a weird thing. I think it's a bit of a sort of being friendly with IMSA and the Americans because the technology of the future happens to be a next-generation NASCAR. Uh, it's a great big Chevrolet Camaro. Uh, he's sharing the car with Jimmy Johnson, of course, you know, a superstar of, uh, of uh, NASCAR, uh, and Mike Rockenfeller. You might think, if I say Mike Rackenfeller, it sounds like a very American, but he's actually very German. Uh, does DTM for Audi, but also races for uh, Cadillac and IMSA. So he's been racing in the American Sports Car Series. So these three are taking on the, 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 the Le Mans 24 hour race in a great big thumping NASCAR. Obviously, you know, amended and adjusted. It'd be interesting to see because they should be amongst the fastest GT cars, I would have thought. So but it'd be great. We can get your British flags out and wave for Jensen. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, so, have we got any um, Chevy news, by the way, or is that uh, is that top secret? Chevy news. Um, yeah, can, no. What 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 were you telling me? Um, 
we ah, want to, uh, ah, love cars. Love cars should be appearing at the June 17th, the Superfest um, brand hatch. It's called Superfest or Super American Fest. We, we, we've been offered a couple of um, Corvettes. It's a Corvette weekend. So it's celebrating so many years of Corvettes. And at the moment, we are penciled in to have a pair of Corvettes for you and me to... Back. I don't think we have doors where we have to climb through windows. I'm not sure they're like NASCAR spec oh, okay. or the doors open. It'd be so funny. It'd be the complete opposite of a cage room. My breaking point would be like <laughs> yards before, um, before a cage room, but that'd be amazing. I got some I got some news, Tiff, Tiff, hot off the press. Guess what went live last night? Your Our piece in Audi. Our Dakar piece with Audi. Yes, in love cars in Audi. Yes, I was going to mention that later because no. we have, we actually, there's someone that you met that features later, which obviously you know because you're well up to date with all the news, aren't you? Of course I am, yeah. Absolutely. No idea. You've got no idea. Let's get on to some proper racing. <laughs> Forget us at Brad Hatch, which should be fun. The Daytona 24 Hour Sports Go, absolutely wonder. I was dropping in and out of it. Amazing. The Radio Le Mans commentary team, led, of course, by John Hindhoff, you know, with that famous Northeast accent. Um, well, I called him a Geordie once, and I'm, he never, he hasn't forgiven me yet. He's, he's a Macam. It's a Mackham. Hey, hey, not a Geordie. Mac- What's um, that Macclesfield, is it? No. Mackham Sunderland, isn't it? Uh, Sunderland, and is it? Geordie's, Geordie's a Newcastle. But anyway, um, a brilliant coverage. I mean, they do it so well, the television, so and well built up. That's just on, such a brilliant job yeah. as well. Yeah. Just on the website. Um, yeah. Anyway, so it was the dawning of the new era. So this is the American half of the future World Sports Car Championship. So the cars here were the American LMDH. So that's the Daytona Hybrids. Although in America, when they're racing in the IMSA Championship, they call them GTPs. That's their old name for sports cars. So it's slightly confusing there. Uh, but the LMDH is the one that have to share a form of, sort of LMP2-based chassis. So this is a one-half. Whereas, whereas Toyotas and Peugeots and Ferraris are, are the little more hybrids, where the manufacturer builds the whole car. They have different hybrid systems. Um, these are American cars. They have to be based on a chassis of choice, which is either the Delara from Italy, the Multimat from Canada, or two French manufacturers, Orica and Ligier. So you have to buy one of their chassis. Then you have to have a, an extract-made hybrid uh, regen system. So all cars have got the same hybrid, which I like. So everyone's on the same platform, makes it more equal and fair. You can have any engine. I think they have some sort of power limit. But the um, so the four makes down the back with a Cadillac, where it's 5.5-litre, um, normally aspirated engines thumping away on a Delara chassis. The others are all um, turbos, BMW Turbo with a Delara chassis, Porsche on the Multimac, and the Acura, or Honda to us, on the Eureka chassis. So, but they, it's all about its balance of power, and they're getting so good at doing this, these GT3 and now going up to hybrids, that these four manufacturers, nine cars, were covered by about half a second in qualifying. And they've thumping around for 24 hours. But people worried about the reliability. Um, of course, they have quite a few, not as many as normal this year, yellow cars all bunch up again. Um, but about five of them, I think, got to the finish. Or six of them got to the finish ahead of all the MP2s. So amazingly reliable, really, for a whole new Formula hybrid package. Um, but it was just magic to watch. And of course, you know, Daytona, there's 61 cars. You know, there's, there's four other classes. And the Americans said this towards the end of the race, because the GT cars, there was a pack of seven that finished covered by five seconds. Incredible. And they sort of, they split the screen. So you're watching the, the leaders race in one part of your screen, and you're watching them battle in the other part of the screen. And sometimes you have three classes all having big, big com- competition battles for their leads, the third screen. So the drama builds up and builds up. And um, at the end of that was an Acura really dominated the weekend. They were always just that little bit quicker. Uh, the British driver Tom Blomquist, son of Stig, the real Stig Blomquist, yeah. uh, now a British, under racing under British, he was on pole position for Acura, and they pretty much dominated. They finished one two, the second uh, Acura not far behind. Uh, the Cadillacs finished third, fourth, and fifth. Um, again, more British drivers. This is what I love about the return of sports car racing. Because all those British drivers that thump up through Formula 4 and Formula 3 and bankrupt their fathers and then don't get the Grand Prix drive, they're earning good money now. There will be now more and more jobs growing for these drivers. Because yeah, amongst the Cadillac team, there was four British drivers, Alex Lynn, Richard Westbrook, Alexander Sims, and Jack Aitken, of course, who, who made his Grand Prix debut for Williams a year or so back. They're all in, in the Cadillacs. Um, 
BMW outlasted Porsche in the in the not very reliable race. <laughs> uh, they both neither manufacturer had a very good weekend, um, but it was just great to watch. Uh, yeah, the LMP2s, oh. the all Arikas. Did you enjoy? Is, did you enjoyed sports cars a lot when you? When oh, you I loved it, around. Well, I, I was going to mention <laughs> it was a bit tougher in my day. If you tell them, oh, you know, tougher in your day, oh, lit world clean, Monty Python. But they suddenly showed one of the prototype boys going around the bank at 200 miles an hour with one hand off the wheel, just, uh, you know, uh, 200 miles an hour. <laughs> They've got power steering, of course. Yeah. Um, back in, uh, what was it, about 86, I raced the Porsche 962 there. We led for quite a while. Uh, and the weight of the steering going around, my arms were just getting more and more exhausted, just trying to hold the lock to keep it from going up the hill. I did and, a lap um, in one. Remember, I did a lap. Yes, you have. You've done. I, that should that should make YouTube fairly soon. Actually, that was uh, uh, and I, I was I was going slow, but this turning the, the weight the steer, yeah, incredible. I mean, at some stage, I used to lock my elbow into the monocoque on the side just to hold the lock it's on, true. just to take a bit of load off. It, it was tough for my day. Ah, oh, this power steering, right? <laughs> Why it mustn't talk to the other NASA because it was power. Um, and it was a, when we led the race for about two hours in the middle of the night. I always remember coming off the turn four banking, and you'd look up the famous uh, totem pole with the positions, and you see your number. Yep, we're still leading. We're still leading, and it was uh, brilliant. But it was a tough, you tough race. In, you must have had in car comms back in the day, but just no, you... no, Ray. Well, Ray just used to work in front of the pits, not really that well. Wow. But I had, I had a nightmare. I mean, I had a, about five retirements and one finish. I had a tire blow. I was racing one of those open top Porsche converted nine three sixes. Uh, what they called Kramer K3s or whatever it was. And we were running third. It was a dawn came up. And I was like, a wonderful stint and the lap times were dropping because that's when the quickest times when the air's coolest. And just coming th onto the beginning of the start-finish trioval, the rear tyre just exploded. Uh, and the great big tyre train ripped the rear wing off the back and I just spun around. I hit a car on the left of me that I was just beginning to go through, hit the wall on the outside near the start-finish line and ended up on that little bit of green grass right in front of all the pits with the turbo oil on fire and uh, pretty depressing. It's, it's but, depressing at the best of times, but when you're in a team, it's awful, isn't it? It must feel awful. I didn't have far to walk back to the pits on that occasion. <laughs> that was a good thing. Um, but as the LMP2 cars, which were all Arikas, and as I said, this is a slightly worrying thing about when you have to pick one of only four options. And you have to, once you pick that chassis, you can't sort of change it much. Uh, because there used to be about four different chassis in LMP2. But uh, you know, the, the Arikas became the one to beat. So people started selling off their Ligiers that didn't work that well or their Delaros didn't that work well. Uh, so everyone's Arika. It still provides great racing. There are about, I think, about 12 cars. But they had the best finish. And again, this was in the screen. We saw the win across the line. Then we cut back to so these two Arikas. And one was driven by with the British driver, Ben Hanley, another guy out there earning money. But the, there was an Aussie chasing him in, the, in another identical car. They'd been at it for like 10 laps, just, just racing like Formula Fords. And he just got a double slipstream up to the finish line. Handy had led the last 10, 20, 30 laps, maybe more. And um, the other one just crept by him, won by 0.016 seconds to take the win. And of course, when you win any class, you get the famous Rolex watch which is probably worth a bob or two so poor old ben Handy lost his rolex watch by 0.016 tremendous racing now better news for the brits the gts again gts are earning money racing and um our evergreen darren turner along with other brits ian james was part of the aston martin team that won the gtd class and he was the first of the seven gt cars crossing the finishing line covered by just Five seconds. Incredible. I mean, it was Incredible. fantastic racing. In fact, third in the GT Pros were another three Brits. I'll read out the names because they were worth mentioning. Jack Hawkins, Ben Barnicote, Mike Conway, all names that came up to the ranks of, of single-seaters in Britain. Um, Ollie Milroy was third in one of the other GTs. Catherine Legg, talk about female racing drivers, one of the best uh, female racing drivers Britain's had. She did IndyCar, uh, Indy Lights. So she's out there earning good money. She came fourth in GTs. Um, and Wayne Boyd was one of the winning part of the winning team that won the LMP3 class. So congratulations, all those Brits out there earning money as professional racing drivers. And I love to see that. But it is a great year. I mean, so those nine, unfortunately, um, accurate at the moment aren't going to do the World Endurance Championship. But the other three, Cadillac, BMW, Porsche, 
When it comes to Sebring in about a month's time, they're all going to be joined by Toyotas, Peugeots, Ferraris, Glickenhaus. And next year, we've got Lamborghini coming in, Alpine Brilliant. coming back. It's Brilliant. just... It's going to be about 11 manufacturers with two cars each. That's, that's 22 with three drivers in each. That's sort of 66 professional, you know, earning drivers. What's the shortest maybe, race WEC do? do? So they're usually six hours or 1,000 Ks. There might be a 500 K. Two drivers? They're, they're pretty, well, they don't. I'm surprised more manufacturers don't drop to two. They all seem to have these three drivers. Three, yeah. And they're so fit nowadays, and the cars are less physical to drive. Um, you know, changing gear to much easier. Oh, a great big stodge. If you tried the Porsche gearbox, aren't you? I mean, just changing gear was yeah. wearing your arm out, not to mention the blisters on your hand. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, they most will still have three drivers. But I think they do cut down to two, which I think is better because I like the sort of the pairings, you know, X and Bell, and Bell and X, you know, mass and famous names, famous pairings are what grew up in sports well, car racing. Right? Well. Bell and Bell as well. Bell and Bell and Bell. So, who yeah, is, one. Who was first? Who was first on the car? Bell or Nidell? Oh, I think Bell. It was Bell, Bell, Nidell. We had Derek's son also out with us. So, so if you didn't watch that, I don't know why. I kept I was punching my Twitter every three hours trying to get more people to watch it. And more did come back and say, yeah, this, this is great. You know, this is so many fans are beginning to get into, you know, and if Formula One goes and means you have to pay £7,000 to have a ticket to go watch it. You know, I think more people might turn to sports cars as a, as a way of, of enjoying it. £7,000 for a ticket, are they? Paddock Club is. Yeah, but you, you don't have to and get... And that's the beginning. Club. No, I know. Club. But what's the... Okay, what's the minimum? £1,000 for a grandstand seat? No, rubbish. If you want to get it for what? For for, for one, one Sunday, it's going to cost you... You can't have one... They're almost months. dropping out one Sundays, I think. I don't know. I haven't looked. I haven't looked. I'm lying. I don't know what I'm talking about. Pricings. Yeah. I know it's going up a lot. <laughs> I know going to watch a Grand Prix, whichever country it is, isn't cheap. You're so, right. So uh, then we go from one extreme to the other. Formula, Formula e. e. I'm still watching Formula E. I'm still watching um, Diria. One of them. It's a, quite a spectacular track with this um, famous bobstay, as they call it, going down the hills. But it, it's the sound. It's still the sound, however close they are. Um, it's still not really winning me over. Uh, and right now, it is Porsche dominated. You have the drivetrain. The last, so there's two rounds of Diria on following days. And the same two drivers that came first and second in Mexico came first and second uh, in both Diria races. Um, and Pascal Verlein won both the races. The guy that was second in Mexico, but he's an official Porsche team. Uh, was Jake Dennis, the British driver for the Andretti team, who won in Mexico, but they've got Porsche drivetrain, uh, came second twice. Um, Sam Bird got a third. Good for Sam Bird to come back in a terrible weekend in Mexico. He came ahead one of the thirds for Jaguar. And Rene Rast, the German, got the other third place for McLaren, who uh, they run a Nissan powered train. So, which is obviously something that Nissan had been in it for many years. Um, and Jake Hughes, the British driver in his debut season in Formula E, had a pole position in the second race. So, you know, it was, yeah, yeah. But it was certainly good to see the McLarens up there and the Jaguars up there. Um, but it seems like the Porsche power plant. Well, they're funny enough, the two sort of other drivers, the Porsche, Felix da Costa, had a miserable weekend, and so did Andre Lotterer, who's uh, Jake Dennis's uh, teammate. So obviously it's not a guarantee. Oh, it's the future, but it depresses me. It really depresses me. Oh, no. The whole electric car depresses me so much. It's just when they, when they overtake, when they've just got more power to use and they just drive past. It's a bit like putting your DRS on. You, you, you save a bit of power so you've got 1% more than the guy you're following. And the team virtually says, okay, you, know, you can stay on the throttle for another 100 yards. And so you just wheeze past them. So it's strategy, not racing. Because you're not going to out. Well, the not- drivers, they, I mean, they're on it, you know, in the corners, you know, because they decel, you know, down, they've got to keep as, as high a minimum speed as possible. So it's still a lot of, that's why you have, some really good drivers getting paid really good money. Another place where you can earn good money, but it's if not I was a the ability of drivers, driver, they're some of the best drivers in the world. It's not <laughs> that. It's just that they're, they're, they're told they're not allowed to go flat out all the time. I would say, I, I would say if you offer the 22 Formula E drivers a, a factory drive in a World Sports Car Championship car, all 22 would, would take the option. Assuming the money's the same. They might not get paid as much in sports cars. But anyway, the show goes on. The show goes on. Uh, race of Champions, the other race. Now, I don't know. The Race of Champions yeah, is something that... on the snow, wasn't it? But I've watched, I started watching it earlier. But does it do anything for you anymore? I've got, it's just sort of so repetitive. 
you don't know really who's winning until they come to the line. And the Sweden was even worse because the gap on the first lap, one lap was much, much slower than the other lap. So, it's, so you, you'd finish the first lap about 10 seconds ahead and then you'd finish the second lap 10 seconds behind and hopefully have a... a but it's just... I don't know. Does it, does it does it get you excited? I like I like getting all the best drivers from different yeah. uh, sports into one race because we mentioned that last week, but it didn't really do it for me this this weekend. I didn't watch much of it to be honest. I just wasn't. I know, it's so drawn out. It just goes on for so long. I mean, you said big name Sebastian Vettel was there, Thierry Neuville from rallying, Sebastian Loeb. British team was uh, David Coulthard and Jamie Chadwick, who got pumped out early on, I'm afraid. The winners of the Nations Cup from Norway were father and son, um, Petra and Oliver Solberg, which is quite a nice story. Norway. Um, what? No way, no way. No, no, gosh, not, your, not one of your jokes again. But the winner, of course, as you know, of the individual was, was your oh, was best it, buddy. Matthias. A Matthias, was it? Oh, we um, like that. Do you know his surname at all? Do you remember that as well? Ekstrom, of course. Ekstrom. So Ekstrom. yes, so from straight from shaking your hand on the Love Cars video, which you can go and watch after you've listened to us and watched us. Uh, after shaking your hand, he's rushed off to Sweden and won. He's won it four times. He's well, one this of those is, guys that this just... is hot off the press. I wasn't going to tell anyone this, but now I'll tell you. I gave him some tips of how to win. Oh Sweden. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he was a what? charming charming man I didn't know he's won the race of champions four times individually. yeah wow. that's his fourth time yeah he's just such an all round I mean he did single seasons I think and just Le Mans and he's just yeah, an incredibly talented driver so if you haven't seen the video please go and watch it because we don't get many but Harry's Garage I think he's on like 100,000 views already we're on about 1,000 <laughs> um, yeah cheer Paul up cheer Paul yeah, up yeah cheer me up but he's such a lovely man I, and I just asked him I tried to ask him some different questions I only asked him a few questions because he was just finished, um, and the last did, thing did you have to go through? Did you have to go through all the British um, YouTubers yeah, being interviewed yeah, by all of you? The same. So, I, so I, <laughs> I, know, I, I, was, I know. So I literally just said, and the most interesting one was um, you've seen the video, but the most interesting one I thought was what do you prefer? Because it was raining when we were there; it was very muddy a lot of the time in Dakar. Anyway. Yeah, I can see where you, you showed your little shoes. Was that was that a product <laughs> endorsement of your shoes? Were they waterproof trainers? No. Did you put hashtag? What's the mate? Quick, get the mates. That's what no, YouTube's no, supposed to you do. Were, I had to pay for those ones. Puma, give me shoes. So I'm going to say they were Puma, but they weren't Puma. But he said he much prefers the hot sun and the sand over the the mud and the and the rain. So, uh, but go and watch it. Yeah. It's uh, quite interesting. Oh, good. What's good. next? But he's what he's he's Swedish. Yeah, Swedish. Yeah, so he should, he should like the snow. I mean, he's born born in it. That's very true. Right, let's go from snowy Sweden. Um, yeah, the other like, racing last weekend, yeah, all the all the okay, single seaters. I mean, we like I like looking at these single seaters because these are the kids that are going to be the names of the future. Generation. Somewhere, somewhere, some of these will get through to the Formula One grid, and and the. The one most likely to from what I've seen so far is is the, the leader of the Formula 4 UAE. They moved to um, Kuwait, a new track in Kuwait this weekend. And I've got to get learn this name because I think we're all going to hear a lot more of this name. Uh, he had another win in Kuwait. And he's, a, he's got a Nigerian mother, an Italian father, and um, he's an American by the name of Hugo, Hugo Chukwu. Chukwu. I haven't heard I haven't heard any other commentators say it. Hugo, Hugo Chukwu. Okay. Um and he's got a big championship lead now. Uh, there were wins for the Australian James Wharton and the Maltese driver, Zachary David. So it's amazing how widespread, you know, motorsport used to be just sort of French drivers and English drivers and Scottish drivers. And that was about it, you know, the odd Italian. And it's incredible how diverse motor racing has become as more and more countries become wealthy enough for fathers to get their children in. And don't forget, it's the fathers that get these kids up the ladder not motorsport so if you've got a daughter and that's where you have to be you have to be in formula four uae in january well, well it's that that's contentious because why not have them start off in sim racing that's you know can't can't somebody go through sim racing and arguably sim racing i don't i don't I, I don't think it's a good enough training ground i know i know that there are sim races that when they get into a car are brilliant yeah but that may be because they just got natural talent. I don't think sim races makes it helps a little bit, but it's it, you'd have to go in and in against the mainstream eventually. Um, they, I think all these kids, 
to be fair, they are sim racers as well. Younger I mean, generation. Yeah, because when they let me just when they got a when he says kids, younger generation. Oh gosh, God, yeah. <laughs> when they're when they're, when, when they're sitting in their hotels for when when they're stuck in a hotel in Kuwait for a week, I'm sure they're all on their sims uh, playing the circuits, learning a bit more. But they've got to get out of the car. Um, so the other race in Kuwait was the Formula More Senior One up the ladder, the Formula Regional Middle East. Uh, three different winners. Again, you see diversity. The Swede, Dino Boganovic, Boganovic. British driver Taylor Barnard. Maybe he's a Brit for the future. Uh, and a French driver, Sammy Mejutunif. What's the youngest? Of these names? In this They're case. all about 12, I think. <laughs> no, no. They're all 16, 17, 18, 19. I don't think there's anybody over 20 probably in all these races. I'll have to be sure. Um but in the Formula region, one name that you should look at, really, because he could be an Italian star, um, he had two second places to keep his championship lead, and that's Andrea Antonelli. Good, proper racing guard name, that Antonelli. Um, whereas down under, the other single-seater race series, which is the old famous, the New, the New Zealand series, just the Tasman series, where in the old days, the Formula 1 drivers, you know, Jim Clark, Graham Mill, Denny Helm, Jack Brabham, they used to go out and race in this famous winter series. But it's now just for the junior single-seaters, the younger, the what word did you use? Anyway, Charlie Wirtz, son of Grand Prix driver Wirtz, Alex Wirtz, uh, has been sort of dominating this championship along with the Kiwi Callum Hedge. Out of six races, they won two each. So Callum Hedge, Kiwi. But um, the British driver, uh, Louis Foster, who has already got a drive this year. He was one of the Autosport uh, finalists. Uh, he won the Indy Pro 200. He's gone out to America to further his career. He's already got a drive lined up in Indy NXT, which used to be Indy Lights. It's actually Jamie Chadwick's teammate in the Andretti team okay. doing Indy NXT. So I don't know why he suddenly decided he needed to go to New Zealand. Maybe he wants to hone up on his suntan or hone up on his driving skills. And he turned up and won the first race he did, came second in the second one, and then clashed with Vert to the third race, ran, ran into the back of him going into a tight corner, took them both out. Uh, so he certainly stirred up the uh, the Kiwi series. It's no longer a two-horse race. Um, but Charlie Vert and Hedge still well out in the points um, because, of course, uh, Foster's only doing those the last few rounds. So it's all good stuff. It's all good stuff. It was a, it was a, a ram-packed weekend. But, and what's yeah. coming next weekend, Tiff? Not so much. All those, all those same three single-seater series have got another three races, another round, more wheel-banging. I watched some of that Kuwait circuit. The, 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 um, and this, these safe circuits, they don't help it. The, which circuit? I say not Kuwait. Where were they? Yeah, they were Kuwait, the new Kuwait. motor town yep. circuit. And all this massive runoff for safety, it just encourages them to go four wide into turn when they had some awful clashes and crashes and, you know, people getting put out of the races and another £25,000 damage bill for daddy. Um, and it's that is some you of the problem with safety. Saying daddy all the time, well, it could be mummy. Well, mummy then, mummy's sponsors. got the money. It could be parents. They could be they could be young entrepreneurs, Stop associates of parents, parents' friends. <laughs> Tiff, um, in in June for our um, let's get back to some proper racing um, or some exciting. We're just talking about next weekend, and you've changed uh, the subject. But in June, where, will we be on the Brands Hatch Indie course? Yes, yeah, if we get there. Thrucks and historics that weekend. I might be have to go on contracts. I might be, I don't know, clash. It's a clash for me. It's an unfortunate oh, clash. So you don't want to go on track against me at the same time. Is that what you're telling our <laughs> listeners? Is that what you're telling uh, us? I think you'll find I'm in contact with the promoter and I will have the choice of the vehicle involved. <laughs> yeah. now, one vehicle is currently being built fresh from the chassis with all the best kit in it. And the other is his dad's thing that's been stuck in a garage for about two years. Never told now, me this. Which did one? You? Which one should we let? Which one were you at? Which one? I don't know. Anyway, we'll sort that out later. <laughs> I hope you right. break down. <laughs> this weekend, loads of single seaters. Um, only two other major events um, down in Bathurst. Have you enjoyed watching um, the production from Imsa.com? I don't know who's going to put the telly out a lot, but it's the Bathurst 12 hours for GT3s, which round that track should be absolutely an awesome Brilliant. thing to watch. It's the first round of the Intercontinental GT Championship, which is five rounds. It starts at about, I think I've worked out right, about 6 p.m. Saturday night. So it'll finish about 6 a.m. our time. So if you if you start going Googling somewhere on Saturday evening, you might catch up with a Bathurst. Or on Sunday night, you can watch the completely ridiculous uh, beginning of the NASCAR season, which as of last year, it's this bush clash 
So it's, you don't get any points. So it always used to be at one of the normal circuits. But last year, they put it in this a quarter mile in the Coliseum, the old famous Coliseum in Los Angeles. Um, and they raced around this quarter mile track. But there's about 27 cars. They have about three heats and finals and last chance racing. So uh, if you want to watch big bangers hitting each other, then the, the Coliseum NASCAR race begins the season okay. on Sunday night. And finally, football news. How did the Saints get on this weekend? Um, yeah, we won just. In fact, I've got to go to the Twitter account because we still haven't bought a centre forward. If we don't buy a centre forward, we're going to get demoted. And speaking of Twitter, let us know on Twitter. Do you watch this or do you listen to it on on uh, Spotify or Apple or somewhere? Or do well, you have, they'll have to, you'll have to go to YouTube right? Right. on Twitter. Go to if you if you're only listening to it on Spotify, log on to us on the YouTube and make a <laughs> comment there. Yes, then we yes. can read the comment. The why we're on both channels, Spotify you can't, comments. Yeah, very. Can true. you also tell us why we get about five comments in day one and then nobody stops? Oh, we want more comments. Even you just say hello. We want, we want more press, everything. Press comment, hello. Yes. To encourage us. The amount of research I do for all this. Hope you, it's just not appreciated. Look, pages of research. You go, you go. You don't do anything. You sit in the car. So, oh, I want some appreciation from out there, fans. Hang on a minute. Let me just add to our fans, that, 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 or your fans, not mine, but let me just add. What do you think happens? Do you think it's like magic fairy dust? Just this uh, automatically uploads across multi platforms and gets so and gets shared. You do that, yeah. That's your There's job. Fairy dust everywhere. That's your uh, job. It's a team effort, Tiff. There's no I in team. Remember. <laughs> Thanks for joining. We'll see you next week. Oh man, see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>